the Dave Barlow guitar and it's been oh two years since uh, I put up my first video I think somewhere around that uh, one of the first videos I put up two years ago uh, I think it was one of the, the third video that I put up uh, the, the first real video I suppose that I put up was about pickups um, uh, as anybody who knows my channel knows I go on about pickups quite a lot but I want to I want to show you some proof in the pudding right so two years ago I put a video up about uh, a pickup company that makes pickups that sound like you know expensive pickups but are not expensive pickups they're actually quite value for good value for money pickups or as I said in a video I got it here somewhere it says cheap guitar pickups what to buy and are they any good uh, 214,000 I don't know 200 mate loads of views I mean loads and loads of, of it can't be it's got to be a quarter of a million views I think something like that so um which is good for me you know it's good for me so um you know I'm an unknown so uh you know people don't like search me up but that's not bad a quarter of a million views is pretty good I suppose um for that so um two years later uh and I don't know a hundred videos later about various different subjects and and perhaps, I don't know what, in two years, uh, 24, 50, maybe 150 gigs later, 150 gigs later using these pickups, uh, here I am. With guess what? These pickups in. So I thought I'd just kind of revisit this. And so, you know, because you, you watch a lot of uh, video reviews, um, you know, and like a the guy's there, he's going, oh yeah, this is the pedal, right? Yeah, this pedal, it does this, it does this, it does that, it's like the best thing. You know, and they show you how good it is and what great it is, and they'll probably do a recording or something. You know, I'm not trying to pick anybody out here, but you know, it, you know, lots of, you, you know, lots of, lots of reviews on this. And then, you know, next week they're reviewing something else, you know, and next week they're reviewing something else, then something else, something else. Because, because obviously they want to sell you something, um... Which is which is great. That's that's how it works. It's e-commerce. It's you know that's how the world turns around. So I'm cool with that. But the thing is, you never get to find out whether something's gonna last. You know the the, the you know the the, the the test of time. You know the, as, so. Are these pickups still good now? Um, you know, um, are people you know are people still are still uh, are people people still? I'm getting all tongue tied. But you know, are these pickups still good now? Two years later. Um, Nobody does videos about that. So, like, you know, I bought this, I bought this amp two years ago. And, like, uh, when I bought this amp, it was great. And I showed you all this stuff. And it does all these different things. You know, obviously, people move on. They have different amps and stuff. But, uh, and you know, and they might move on. That's cool. But, like, you know, if something, you've, if something that you've stuck with uh, uh, and something that, you know, passed, is passing the test of time, it's worth, doing a re worth going back onto that um, product and reviewing it again. Uh, because, obviously... When you've had something, when you've been using, when you've been using pickups for say two years, you get, you, you, you know, you get a, you get a big insight into, you know, what, what, how good they really are. Now, in, in truth, I've been using these pickups for probably ten years. Uh, I only started doing YouTube videos two years ago, so I've been using these pickups for ten years. Now, I'm a nobody, so who am I to say whether they're any good or not? But you know, it, it, a gig every weekend um, as much as probably some of the other guys that do on YouTube that are famous uh, maybe more but there you go so I'm using these pickups this is you know um, what a poor man's pickup no it isn't it's a rich man's pickup but um, if you don't know you know the, the guys that are playing let's be honest right let's let, let, let me spit this out the guys that are playing you know the high-end pickups and stuff right that you know that as uh, uh, saying yeah I use these pickups man because they're the best pickups in the world. They get them for free, you know. So they're going to say that, you know, these high end pickups they get them for free. And then you have to go and buy these pickups because this guy says they're the best pickups in the world or the best strings in the world or whatever. I haven't got a problem with that. But what I'm saying is, you know, you got to kind of like think about it for a second. Uh, all I'm saying is that I've tried these pickups out for now ten years and they're they're pretty good. I'm not saying you should go and buy them. Uh, or, or you should try them out. Uh, I'm just showing you them on this YouTube video. I'm just proving to you that these pickups are pretty good. Anyway, so let's move on. So, um, in all honesty, I've tried probably 
uh, from a company called Iron Gear. I've probably tried probably all their pickup range. Um, and they're, and to me, and to me, and I've tried them all, and to me, the ones that I like and the ones that work in my guitar really well uh, are, well, let's start with, let's start with the, the, the highest output one. So the highest output one that I, that I, be, well, not the highest output one, actually. I, I'm telling you a lie. The highest uh, Alnico output one, um, not ceramic, Alnico, uh, would be, would be, um, would be the Dirty Talk. And um, I put in this guitar, I put in this guitar uh, another one uh, from Iron Gear, which is called uh, the Blues Engine. And the thing is, it's the great thing about um, cheaper, cheaper um, pickups. It means that you can like, you know, you've got, you can buy two sets, right? And, and I'll tell you why. So I don't buy one set, you buy two sets, buy two sets. So I'll tell you the reason why. This, I mean, I know how this works now, right? But this guitar, is a Hondo 2. It's a 1980, uh, 1979, 19, built in 1979, 1980, and um, it's, I, I suppose it's kind of a cheap guitar, you know, it's just a cheap guitar. Anyway, it's well built, and I use it a lot. Uh, I don't gig with it that much, but I do use it quite a lot. Uh, I've refretted it with stainless steel frets, it's got a new nut on, some new hardware. But And the thing is with this guitar, is um, I put in a, a, a blues engine by Iron Gear uh, some, some time ago, and and it was and it was too bright. It was too bright for this guitar. I love blues engines. I'll come on to them in a minute because I got most of my guitars. I got them on, but um, too bright for me. So I needed something. Um, I needed something which was you know not so bright as the uh, as a blues engine. As a blues engine is kind of more of a path kind of thing. Um, why is it that people think that a path pickup is like mellow and smooth? Um, well, they might be mellow and smooth-ish, but you know, a path is kind of a brighter pickup um, than most people imagine. I don't know why that is, but anyway, moving on. So this in here is a Tesla Shark. I got a Tesla Shark in the bridge position because this is like a maple, solid maple body guitar, so it's really bright. That's crunch uh, clean with a bit of. Um, Blues engine in the neck position. Blues engine neck. Um, in the bridge position is a Tesla Shark. Let's put some. Um, let's put some. Uh, Overdrive on that. Okay, let's try some food flies. Yeah, something like that anyway. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. So yeah, that's that's guitar. So that's the, the Tesla Shark and uh, that's the blues engine there. You know, um, in all fairness, I've been like trying this out for a bit lately, and I think I'm going to swap that out, that uh, neck pickup for uh, that blues uh, that blues engine neck pickup. I'm going to swap that out, and I'm going to put a Tesla Shark in there because I know uh, that'll work much better. Uh, it's just that, it's just that this guitar is just so bright. So. Um, I'm gonna change. I'm gonna change the guitar to uh, a guitar which is kind of like the opposite end of the spectrum, I suppose, in terms of brightness. Okay, so this is the Les Paul, and at the moment, the Les Paul has in it. Oh my good lord! It has in it uh, um, a set of blues engines. Uh, this is a blues engine bridge pickup. This is a blues engine neck pickup. Uh, I swap backwards and forwards from uh, Dirty Talk in the neck to. Um, a Tesla shark, oh, sorry, a Tesla shark in the neck to uh, um, a dirty talk in the bridge. I can't swap it back as a forwards because I can't decide which one I like the best. It's a problem for me, but both sound pretty awesome. Um, it's kind of one of them things. It's like it all comes together. You know, when you're in the band and you're playing with the rest of the band and you're playing, and it just all comes out. You can hear all the harmonics and all that kind of stuff. As you know, if you ever watched any of my channels, is if if you ever want to find out how how good an amp is, or how good a, an effect pedal is, or how good your guitar is, go play with a band. 
and that's that's the way you really find out how good you know that that piece of equipment is but anyway this is the Les Paul um, this has had a uh, yeah this has had some serious upgrades if you're following the channel I upgrade my guitars in the way I like them um, so um, this has got um, some uh, stainless steel jumbo frets on it uh, exactly the way I like them and I've also um, put in for the first time ever I've never done this I put in a brass nut uh, a brass nut and I'm pretty pleased with that actually I'm very pleased with how that Sound. So kind of a brass nut sounds. Um, yeah, similar to the to to, to, a, to, a, to a fretted note. It is pretty. Yeah, but hey, you know, if you're kind of a bit of a pure, it doesn't bother me. I just I just want to try it out. But um, yeah, tuning stability is very good uh, with this guitar. Um, it's got locking locking uh, tuners on it. I've had locking tuners on it for a long time. Um, anyway, so uh, yeah. Um, blues engines. I just, uh, I just, I just, uh, I just put some, um, I just put some nines on this. Uh, it should have tens because I, I usually uh, tune in E flat, but um, so they're a bit floppy. But, uh, sounds the same. So that's kind of clean with a bit of chorus. Clean without chorus. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's the uh, neck. It's basically a uh, blues engine. Is basically a classic path sounding pickup. That's what it is. Uh, it, it uses um, Alnico um, four magnets. So. Uh, it's kind of weird. Uh, so I kind of I like I really like. I'm gonna be honest with you. I really like the Seymour Duncan SH1. Um, their kind of blues pickup, which is kind of like the Angus Young. I think it's the nearest you can get to kind of an Angus Young kind of pickup. Um, it, it's really good. Actually, it's a really good pickup. Uh, and, it's, and it uses an Alnico 5 magnet in it. And I always found that the, the, the top a little bit too squeaky and the bottom a little bit too bottomy for me. Um, great if you want to get if you want to get the exact ACDC kind of sound, but I, I just kind of like to have a little bit less top and a little bit less bottom. So kind of veering towards the Alnico 2, but not quite. So the Alnico 4 seems to do that for me. For me, it does that. So if you like, it's Alnico 4 is kind of in between a 5 and a 2. That's the way I explain it to my ears. Okay, obviously put comments in the bottom if you disagree or you think I should describe that in a different way. But anyway, that's kind of how it feels to me. And some people say that the Alnico Four is has no character to itself. Um, I'm not. I'm not quite sure about that. I I don't agree with that. Um, so. But if if so, then then it would be if that was so, then it would be a transparent pickup. So if you think that it's win-win, um, if you want your guitar sound to come out. Anyway, great thing about these pickups, your guitar sound will always come out. They will never override that sound of your guitar. So I don't know how to explain that any better than I have just done. So. <laughs> Middle position, I haven't done anything weird with that. <laughs> Sounds exactly how you'd expect a less poor sound, I expect. Hey, let me just tune this up because these strings are a little bit. Okay, we're slightly better tuning there. Sorry, sorry about that. I, I, I've only just finished this guitar. I've only just put it back together again. So um, um, you're hearing the guitar. Uh, okay. Oh, the, the interesting thing is, uh, you know. This is a this is a this is a, a Les Paul 1960 reissue, and it's been refretted. Let's I don't know whether you can see this or not. 
uh, might be difficult for you to see, but um, I was explaining yesterday to a, a friend of mine that the problem with when you do these is that the 1960s have nibs where the fret ends and the nibs are kind of attached to the binding. So the nibs are part of the binding. So it covers the ends of the frets. So when you refret this guitar, you have to cut the nibs off. Now, if you're not sure about that, just, just check out a video on like you'll see. It's a nightmare. And when you cut the, when you cut the nibs off, now you've got a gap. You, generally, sometimes you have a gap or, or a differential between the binding and the rosewood board. So there's like a little gap left over. So you have to make sure that you do the fret job really, really well. And that, you know, when you pull your strings over, they don't catch on the frets, which I've done here. No catching on frets. Unlike the guy, the shop that I got to do this originally. Anyway, that's in another video. We won't go there. I did all, I do all my own refretting, as you know. I do all my own guitar setups, and now I do my own. I do all re amp repairs as well. But I'll, I'll talk about that another time. All right. So. Okay, so we're done. We're done clean stuff. Um, let's just go uh, onto some dirt. Yeah, so. So, it's good guitar. You can hear all the notes. You can hear everything ringing out. It's got loads of harmonics going on. Even the horrible harmonics come out pretty good. So yeah, that's the blues engines. I mean, I, I, I think um, uh, the, the great thing about blues engines is, is if you, you know, if you just, if you, if you're like, you know, you're backing off, you're using your volume because they're low output. Because. because they're low output pickups, you can, you can just, you can turn the grind, turn the grind off. You know, uh, and you know, have it pretty clean if you're that kind of player, which is great. And uh, you know, and if you want, you know, if you want, if you want more, if if, if you want to pick up with more room, if you just you can use these. You just put more gain on it. I put the gain to full, but. <laughs> Yeah, I'm messing around. Hold on. Sorry about that. I kind of got carried away, but yeah, um, yeah. You just put the you just put more gain. You just put more gain on your amp, and um, you know it gives you more. So um, you get that great kind of pathy kind of sound, and yeah, it's pretty cool. So yeah, I've shown you two sets of pickups. Um, uh, you know, <laughs> that you know I've been using now. I've been using these pickups. I mean, there's there's other pickups I've used as well. Uh, so I, I, I kind of how, how many. How many do we? How many can we go through? Uh, you know how much time we got, but uh, I'm just giving you an idea that it's, this is you know this is this is a revisit 
to uh, the pickups that I use and I love these pickups uh, I love the company because they're consistent and I've always said that about this company their pickups are consistent um, you know gone are the days when pickups are no longer consistent and I don't think people want inconsistent pickups anymore you know you want to buy a set of pickups for one guitar and you think, oh they're great pickups and you buy another pickup set of pickups for another guitar and they're completely different or they're the same weight they're obviously hand wound or something like that they'll be different so if you want that kind of stuff that's that's fine but for, for, from the price range I'm talking about these pickups I mean I use these I use these all the time and I you know and I'm just and I'm just revisiting that that video but anyway enough enough of that so yeah cool yeah so these iron gear pickups really good really love them still using them uh that video still stands um i'm probably going to put a little link and i might even put like a little online thing we uh, with a little bit more information about them just in case you've not seen the original video and um you know we'll, we'll take it from there anyway if you like this video please subscribe uh, put some comments in the bottom. If you do subscribe, you'll notice that in the right hand side of the subscribe button, I don't, I don't know, I can't remember exactly where it is, but there's like a little bell. There's a little bell. You've got to click that. If you don't click that, although you subscribed, you won't get, you won't get emails or alerts as to when I put a new video up. Anyway, if you don't want it, if you don't want to get an alert from me, don't click that bell. But if you do, click that bell and you'll get alerts from me when I put a new video up. Also in the bottom, uh, you'll see that I have an app. Uh, feel free to download that and also I got a Facebook uh, page now the reason why I got a Facebook uh, page is if you want to talk to me directly you want to you want to connect with me and talk to me about guitars repairing guitars or amplifiers or repairing amplifiers keyboards and or anything else that you got uh, that needs attention you can talk to me of course yeah I am in the UK I'm in Surrey uh, uh, in the UK so if you're in America I might not be able to help you with your amp stuff um, um, you know directly but I can always give you advice um, yeah like I say connect with me on Facebook um, and you know we can talk we can chat and I can give you advice from there also I post stuff on there that I don't necessarily post on here um, because YouTube doesn't like me posting some things anyway other than that um, I wish you well and I'm, I'm glad you watched this video and I will catch you later